All right, guys, it is 6.42 p.m. It has been a long day, and I have the Saucony Endorphin Speed 4 in my hand here because we are going to be talking about speed training shoes today, and specifically, my favorite speed training shoes. And if you've been following the channel for a few months, you probably know that the Saucony Endorphin Speed 4 is not going on my list of favorite speed training shoes, but the reason I had to bring it out for the open of the video is because it is the shoe that is most representative of what most of us think of when we hear speed training shoes or up tempo shoes or S asterisk P E R training shoes. We banned that phrase from the channel because I don't like meaningless words, but this is a shoe. It has a carbon fiber. No, it does. It does not have a carbon fiber plate. It has a plastic plate. And that's the key with speed training shoes. A lot of them have the plastic plates and that little Freudian slip there is because you get the carbon fiber plates in racing shoes and then the plastic plates or other types of reinforcements are typically what we see in these speed training shoes. And then you get the racing foam. So these shoes are typically a little bit gentler on the legs, not as harsh as the racing shoes, but don't provide as much speed assistance. And so in this video, we're going to be running down my favorites. I'm also going to give a little bit of an overview of the market and my perspective on how to use these different types of shoes, where they fit in and, and which types of shoes are going to be best for different types of runs and different types of workouts. And before we get into it, two things, guys. One, we had a viewer send something special here in this FedEx box. So shout out to Brian. The other thing, I got to put you on to game really quickly. My guy Charles was asking me, what running books am I reading? So I'm going to show you super quick what I ordered. First one, Science of Running by Chris Napier, Dr. Napier. Put some respect on his name. I have no idea if it's good or not. I have no idea if it's worth buying or not because I haven't read it. But like Andres Reyes said, my doctor, Andres Reyes from the Groton School, you read the good books and you read the bad books. And then second one here, Percy Cerruti. He is not a doctor. Percy Cerruti, Athletics, How to Become a Champion. Now that's the title of a book. That is a great book title. So these are two of the newest ones I'm going to be reading. These were both recommended by viewers. So if you recommended these, thank you so much. This channel is about smashing mileage, and it's also about how to become, I don't know about a champion, but how to become the best version of yourself as a runner. So with that, let us get into it, guys. All right, guys, so let's start it off here with what actually is my favorite speed training shoe. This is in the number one spot. This is the Adidas Boston 12. And so if you take a look at the midsole setup here, this is where the magic is in the shoe. You have two different types of foam. You have a top layer of Light Strike Pro and a bottom layer of what they call Light Strike. It is a standard training foam. It's actually Light Strike 2.0. So it's a little bit softer than the regular Light Strike they have. And the reason that this shoe works so much better for me than the Saucony Endorphin Speed 4 is the Speed 4 has one type of foam in here. It's all this. You can see they put it right in this glistening silver platinum color, Power on PB. And to me, it's a little bit softer and not structured as much as I'd like it. So whenever I tried to run fast in the shoe, this foam with the plastic plate, because it's not a carbon fiber plate, didn't feel the best for me. I'm 6'2", 160 pounds. I run with the slightly lower cadence. My marathon cadence is about 175. My faster than that, 180, but at normal training pace is probably about 170. And so this shoe is a little bit awkward, mushy for the way that I ran and running fast didn't have that bite. And then running slower, it didn't feel that relaxed. And so I know this is the, and the reason I brought it out, the Saucony Endorphin Speed. This is one of the first shoes that really cemented what this speed training market is in the 2020s. The Saucony Endorphin Speed 2 is the one that you guys love so much. And I'm going to go over later in this video, the best replacements for that shoe. But for me, the Speed 4 was a little bit of a miss. So I will not be recommending this I know some lighter runners who are maybe a little bit of higher cadence runners or a bit lighter on their feet really like the shoe. I also have a friend up in New York City. She loves it as a racing alternative to a carbon fiber shoe. So I think some of you might enjoy the shoe if you are a little bit lighter on your feet or if it just works for your mechanics. For me, as more of a heel striker with that lower cadence, not the best shoe. But Boston 12, the real reason 
we talked about the Speed 4 even was because this guy, it just works perfectly for me. This is probably the most versatile speed training shoe for my type of running. And so this is going to be, I crowned it the best marathon training shoe in 2023. It wasn't my favorite overall shoe of the year, which I'm going to bring that one out as well. But this was my favorite marathon training shoe because it was great for longer runs anytime when I was going out over two hours. And it was also great for fast marathon training style workouts. So dropping the pace down to, for me, 520s or 530s, 540s, down to that threshold and faster range, this Light Strike Pro really responded. And then another little sweet sauce that we have here, like the Mac sauce on the Big Mac is the Continental Rubber. So yes, this is the tire company, Continental. And randomly today, we were at the coffee shop in downtown Matthews, and they actually had a sign from the Continental Tire Company. I don't know, Brakeman's did. But it is so sticky, so grippy. I did a head-to-head with the Puma DV8 Nitro 2, and that one was actually a little bit better than this guy. But if you take a look at the outsole wear here, this has 300 miles on it. I recently did a 300 mile review and it's almost pristine. So it's going to be a very durable shoe. You also get, I should mention the, the glass fiber rods here. So it's a little bit flexible, not as stiff as a carbon fiber racing shoe, but also not going to be super soft and not going to be as flexible as the speed four which i can basically bend in half i'm sorry to anybody who's offended by that now downsides of the boston 12 here and one area where the speed four is a lot better is the upper so just for comparison sake take a look at the upper of the speed four you get lots of padding out here in the back very structured boston 12 it's kind of weird. That's the best way I can describe it. It's not flexible at all. You can see as I'm jiggling around this upper here, it moves around a ton. And if I put it on my foot, go watch the 300 mile review if you want more details on the upper fit, but I can stick two or three fingers in between the upper and my ankle when I have this shoe on. So it's not the best fit, but I fix that by wearing the features socks. I usually wear the socks with the padding around the Achilles and that tends to do a pretty good job. And then I know some other people have had issues with the laces. I haven't had too many issues with the laces as long as you work with them. You gotta show them some love and they'll love you back. That's what I've realized about these running shoes right here. You gotta be nice to them. You gotta caress them. You gotta even whisper to them. That's, you know what I learned guys? If you talk to your plants, you can look this up. If you talk to your plants, apparently, they grow better. And if you dance with them and play music for them. So I think it's the same thing for the running shoes. If you are nice to your running shoes, you got to take them out of the box. You can't leave them in the box. And of course you got to run in them, but you clean them off. Look at this 300 miles and it looks still clean. You clean them off. You got to be nice to them and they'll treat you well. So 300 miles, I could still get some miles out of this has some of my fastest workouts of last year. If you're looking for a durable marathon training shoe that can do fast workouts well, and long runs well, I'd go for the Boston 12 here. Now move this speed four out of the frame. We don't even need to, I don't want to talk about that anymore. So next up here, guys, this is the Hokomok 6. And I am mindful that not everybody is running a marathon. Not everybody's training for a marathon. The marathon is not everybody's goal. And Boston qualifying is not a Boston qualifying was never my goal. And I understand we all have different goals as runners. Some of us aren't doing 20 mile long runs. Some of us, maybe we're doing five miles as our long run, six miles. Maybe we're doing 20 to 30 minutes on the treadmill and the shoe that I would recommend. And this is not just for people who are doing that, but for most people, if you want a shoe that's fun and fast, Buy the Hokamok 6. You don't even have to watch the rest of the video. Just trust me. <laughs> Buy the Hokamok 6. This is my number one recommendation shoe this year. For I recommended this in my daily trainer video, and I'm also recommending it in my speed training shoe video. And it, it's a hybrid. It does fast work well, as well as everyday miles. And the reason I'm going to recommend this to everybody is it's super easy to run in. It doesn't have the best stability, but there's enough support and cushion, 37 millimeters of stack in the heel here and 32 millimeters of forefoot. So max cushion shoes are typically about 38 to 40 plus millimeters. This is almost as cushioned as a max cushion shoe. And it has this nice foam in here. The type of foam is a super critical EVA. That means in the manufacturing process, it's been injected with a gas to make it a little bit bouncier and airier, but how it's made really it doesn't matter in the technology it doesn't matter it, what matters is it's enough protection for an hour long run a 90 minute run but where it really shines is just getting out there and having fun on your runs and that's the type of shoe i think most people want 
when they want a running shoe. They want something that's comfortable and fun. And so if you're looking for a fast training shoe, maybe you could be training for the marathon, but maybe you're part of a run club or you just want something that looks good and feels good. Well, looks are subjective. I think this is pretty clean because it's all white. I go for the Hoka Mach 6. I think it would be hard to find anybody who didn't enjoy the shoe. If you've run on the Hoka Mach 6 and you did not enjoy it, let me know in the comments why that is because there's nothing really about the ride of the shoe that I didn't like. The only thing, only thing that I think is going to be a downside for some people is the outsole here. And so if you look at where this rubber is placed, so it, again, let's take a look at the Boston 12 here. Tons of rubber coverage. So that's going to be good for grip. And it's also going to be good for protecting the foam so you don't get a lot of wear. The grip on the Mach 6 was okay. We did the Hoka grip test earlier this week when I got the Skyward X and it was just okay. It wasn't terrible like the A6, but it also wasn't fantastic. But the key downside is you get this back area here exposed. And so I actually, unfortunately, do need to show the Speed 4 again. But I have 100 something miles on the shoe. I put it through the 100 mile week test, which. We're going to have to do to some shoe soon. I don't know. Let me know in the comment section below what shoes should I do the 100 mile week test with that we haven't done it yet so far. But you can see here, right in the area where the Hoka doesn't have any foam, that's where my highest wear area is. And if you are a heel striker, that tends to be where your highest wear area is as well. So that's really the only thing. This might not be the most durable shoe, but Again, I'm not recommending it as a high mileage training shoe. That's going to be the Boston 12 or one of the other shoes that I'm going to highlight in a second here. This is really, if you want something fun for 30 minute runs, hour long runs, maybe you're not running every day, but you want that fun, but still comfortable experience when you are hitting those miles. And so last thing I'll say about this is somebody actually asked me recently, what does marathon pace mean? And that was a really good question because I realized I'd been saying marathon pace talking about my training and I wasn't explaining it. And so this is a really good shoe for running marathon pace, which for me means that effort that's a little bit harder than my aerobic or everyday runs, but I'm not breathing heavy. I can still hold a conversation. And if I were to go out any day of the week, no matter how tired I am, marathon pace would be that effort that I know I could sustain for the entirety of of the run up to 90 minutes without slowing down in the back half. So pretty much any day, I just finished a marathon in about 6.25 to 6.30. I think it was 6.28 was my actual marathon pace. And I could wake up tomorrow and run 10 miles at that pace if I needed to. So that would be a good way to think about it when I say marathon pace. But training for a marathon or not, Hoka Mach 6 is a fantastic shoe. One of the best ones so far that I've tried this year. I have 60 miles on this guy. I really need to get it up to 100 soon. That is the other caveat. I don't love recommending shoes that don't have 100 miles on them yet, but I can in pretty clear conscious recommend this because I had the previous version of it that was set up for even less durability with no outsole at all, and I got 300 miles out of it. So Hoka Mach 6, top recommendation for most people for that speed training shoe. All right, guys, so next up here, we have an oldie, but a goodie. This was my shoe of the year, 2023. The one that I felt had the best value and really fun ride. Can do a lot of different types of runs. It is the New Balance Rebel V3. I'm sorry for the drum roll and the anticipation if you're listening to this and not watching it. But what I loved about the shoe was the fuel cell foam. And if you take a look at the Hoka Mach 6, which we were just talking about, this guy is 37 millimeters and Hoka is positioning it as a lightweight speed training shoe. And it feels like a lightweight speed training shoe, but Rebel is a lot less cushioned and it's kind of the last of a dying breed, almost this whole category of lower stack shoes that give you more ground feel, a little bit more control over the platform. There's not a ton of them left. There's the Saucony Convara. There's this guy. There's the Adidas Audios 8, which by the way, my guy, Matt Byer sent me an amazingly detailed 300 mile review of that, which I'm going to have to figure out where to put it soon maybe somewhere on the website, but there's not too many of them. The last one is the Topo Cyclone 2, which I also have, but this one, for me, if you're looking for that lightweight ground feel, ground connection, you don't want a 40 plus millimeter behemoth like the Skyward X or the Primax Strung or the Cielo X1 or a racing shoe, you want something low to the ground to give you some little bit of that more connected feeling. I still think the Rebel V3 is the best for that. So this fuel cell foam here, it's soft, it's bouncy, it's really similar to the Hoka Mach 6. And that's why I've been enjoying this shoe so much because it's almost like they 
looked at what New Balance was doing in the Rebel V3 and said, we want to make this just a little bit better for every single runner out there. Let's make it more protective. Let's make it even easier to run in. Let's make it look better because we're Hoka. And that's what they did in this shoe. But Rebel is, for those of you who don't want a ton of cushion and you're not scared to have a little bit of an unprotected experience. And so Rebel V3, and the reason I named it my shoe of the year last year was exactly because of that. It is not protective and it's super flexible. And last year I was in the camp rocking with I don't want a lot of stack. I'm not going to use the plates. I did. I went completely non-plated for about three to four months. And I want to make sure on this channel, I'm highlighting all different types of shoes that are good for different types of runs and what different types of runners want. And so if you're in a phase of training where you're looking to build a little bit more leg strength or at least have that connected ground experience, maybe work on form and efficiency, then the Rebel V3 is the best shoe for that. I have to say, in my training right now, I am favoring more high stack shoes with that protection and comfort because what I'm focusing on is not really efficiency and mechanics and optimizing my form. It's more so crushing mileage and protection with the shoe like Boston 12 or something like the Hoka Skyward X, which we brought in. And so there's not a ton of research on what are the benefits of running in these lower stack shoes. And I know there's a lot of us runners talk about maybe you get more strength built up in your lower legs. There's no research on using a low stack shoe can prevent injury. And I said this when we were out here for the daily trainer video, the one piece of research that is super pertinent to this area that we do have says the best thing we could do is rotate shoes with different drops. So the drop is the difference in height between the foam and the heel and the forefoot. This one is a moderate drop shoe. I believe it's six millimeters. If we take a look at the Saucony Endorphin Speed here, man, I keep bringing out this shoe. <laughs> I think this one is about seven to eight millimeters. So rotating different drops shoes can help prevent injury. I also believe that choosing different shoes over the year with different foams and different rolling rocker experiences can can prevent injury as well. So that's what we do now. So if you do want that super lightweight, low stack experience, Rebel V3, this guy is also going to be the deal shoe. You can find it on sale for under $100. And if you're going to do it, make sure to use my running warehouse link. But I want to make sure I highlight deals in these roundups as well. So this would be my deal shoe for this roundup. I might bring out another one, but we don't always have to be new, new, new all the time. And the next version of this, the current one that's on the market, Rebel V4, I really liked that, but didn't love it as much for fast work. I liked it more as a daily trainer. So this is the low stack, lightweight speed monster. All right, guys, next up, we have another oldie, but goodie here. And sometimes the current generations of shoes are not improvements over the last and that was the case with the Saucony Endorphin Speed Series so I talked enough about the Speed 4 this is the previous version of the shoe Speed 3 this guy has 300 miles on it oh I should have mentioned the Rebel that we brought out here right here this guy has about 250 miles 260 and durability is pretty solid so this also will hold up really well this has some life left although I haven't been running in it but Saucony Endorphin Speed 3 here this shoe just captured the spirit of what they're trying to do in the endorphin speed series a little bit better than the four it's a lot easier to run in something with the geometry of the bottom here so the way that the bottom of the shoe is shaped just rolled me along pushed me along really nicely without feeling like i had to alter my form at all it did make me want to run probably 15 to 20 seconds faster than normal but versus the speed four something about that shoe made me feel like I had to run a little bit of a different way to get the most benefit out of the shoe. That was not the case here. And we got the perfect amount of cushion to support any type of run you want to do in the shoe. So it wasn't my personal favorite for long runs, just because I am a little bit of a more powerful style runner with that lower cadence and having longer legs at six, two, I tend to put more force into the shoe. So at the end of a two, two and a half hour effort, wasn't my favorite feeling up in the forefoot here, but for everything other than that, and for most people, this is going to be a great shoe for any type of run you want to do in it. I know lots of people have raced marathons in this, half marathons in this, so could even be that type of shoe if you're looking for a budget racer or an alternative to a carbon plated shoe. And so for $130, I believe that's the sale we have at Running Warehouse right now. I don't know why I said we, I'm not part of Running Warehouse, but if you buy shoes through my link to Running Warehouse, that will support the channel. So I think it's $130. You're going to be getting that plastic plate, decent amount of stability. It actually is a nice wider little bit of heel back here. And the trade-off 
with some of these more fun, bouncy, soft foams is that you get a little bit less stability, but Saucony widened it up from the endorphin speed to, to the three. And this is really the sweet spot with the four. They did a lot of widening and sculpting and curving with this. It's a little bit simpler. So outsole rubber, let's take a look. It was decent. I would say probably similar to the Hoka. So not terrible, not great. And then this guy about 300 miles, you can see I chewed it up pretty good in the back here. So it might not be the most durable shoe depending on how you run. If you're a heel striker, aggressive heel striker like me, put a lot of power into the shoe, probably is not going to hold up well past 300 miles, but I have seen some runners out there getting tons of high mileage out of this shoe. So really will depend. So again, this is going to be another crowd pleasing pick. I think similar to the Mach 6, but if you want something with just a little bit more snap and support, maybe you are training for a marathon and don't want something potentially as firm as the Boston 12. And I should have mentioned that in the Boston 12 section, that shoe does require some break-in. So for all the people who left before we got to this point, they're going to miss out and maybe they bought the Boston 12 and then they're going to be upset because it's firm 20 miles in. That does require break-in. The Speed 3 does not require any break-in. It feels amazing out of the box because of this Power Run PB Piba foam. So two deal shoes in a row, baby. Let's go out here saving people money. Put that in your daughter's college fund. All right, guys. So before we get into the last shoe here, which is one of my favorite shoes of the year so far. And if I had to do a little bit of a favorites list, let me, let me just do a little teaser here. And now we're just looking, I'm just, I'm not even looking through the book. I'm trying to find something, but let me just talk to you. <laughs> this is the book of Daniels, by the way, Dr. Daniels. If I had to do a little bit of a favorites list, this is the intermission. Hoka Mach 6 would be on it. Let me go get the other shoe. And then look at this. This shoe would be on it. Saucony Endorphin Pro 4. And we have one more shoe, which I think might be on it, but we got to test. But okay, the reason I brought out the Saucony Endorphin Pro 4 and the reason I brought out the Book of Daniels here, and there's some English teacher who's just absolutely cringing because I just had shoes on top of a book. I'm sorry, Miss Kerr. Miss Kerr was my seventh grade teacher at the JG Pine Arts in Lowell, Massachusetts. But okay, this is what I wanted to show you. Types of in, in intensities of training from the Daniels running formula. And so there are four to five different styles of speed workouts that Daniels has in here. And I'm not going to bore you with a ton of stuff, but look, marathon pace running, which we talked about, threshold running, that's the pace you could run for about an hour in a race. And then we have interval training. So this differs, but it's typically about three to five minute spurts of training. So shorter and faster. And then we also have hard running, which is similar to that. And then the last two are, or the last one is repetition training, which is even faster than interval training, but similar style where you're running fast. And so with those four types of training, marathon pace, threshold, interval, and reps, a lot of us who are training for marathons, and that's why I brought out the Sock and Indoor from Pro 4, baby, are doing a lot of marathon pace runs, maybe 20 miles, 22 miles, or 16 plus miles with that marathon pace effort in there. And so I'm getting a little bit more bullish on using our race shoe for those workouts, getting comfortable before race day, running race pace in our race shoe. So if that is the case for you, I think the Saucony Endorphin Pro 4 would be an excellent speed training shoe. So this is $225. It undercuts the entire racing market. Every other marathon race shoe other than the Atreyu is $200. So it's giving you the same or $250, I should say. Every other shoe other than this is more expensive. So it's giving you the same tech, which is the carbon fiber plate with the Piba foam. This is that beaded Piba. Has a really nice, fun, bouncy feel. It's giving you a nice rolling rocker here and surprisingly good outsole grip from what they did on this lattice pattern and surprisingly good coverage. So that's the reason why I'm recommending this as not just a racing shoe, but a training shoe. You're going to get good durability from it. I got nearly 300 miles from my Saucony Endorphin Pro 3, which I'll probably have to grab and show you after this, but good durability from that shoe. I highly anticipate we're going to get good durability from this one. I ran a two hour, 55 minute marathon during training in this exact pair right here, and it performed really well. So it's an awesome shoe for long runs without 
again, like the speed three without making you alter your mechanics at all or feeling weird at any pace. I did warm up with this. I've done sub six minute miles with this. I've done that marathon and marathon pace running in it. And every single run, it felt great. And so I actually feel like I should have probably raced my marathon in this. I didn't. And the reason is it's just that comfortable that I tricked myself into thinking I needed a faster feeling shoe on race day, which is not the case. And so I think if you're looking for a race shoe that you can also do workouts in, that would be the Saucony Endorphin Pro 4 here. You're not going to lose the magic before race day by training in it. I mean, just look at this thing, right? It's sick looking. Orange with the purple accents. And then again, that platinum here, which is pretty cool. And then you have a one-piece upper with the stretchy tongue. So this is my top pick for a racing shoe to train in. All right, guys. So we usually do five favorites. And sometimes I'll throw in one with an asterisk and I'm going to call my shot here a little bit like Babe Ruth pointing out to the stands and I'm going to put up a shoe as one of my favorites with a massive asterisk because it only has 14 miles and that is the Hoka Skyward X. And so the reason again that I brought up that Daniels book is because I wanted to show you the range of different speed training workouts. And so if you take a look at some of the workouts I did for my last block, I used the Jack Daniels final 12 week marathon training plan. So if you look at Let's just look at an example workout here. 22 miles, two miles at a nice aerobic pace, four miles at threshold, 10 miles, again, nice relaxed pace, and then two sets of two miles at threshold. So this is a 22 mile long run with eight miles at threshold. And remember, threshold is that pace that you can hold for about one hour. So you're doing almost one hour of work of that in this workout. And so for an effort like that, you want a shoe that's comfortable and cushioned. It's not like a speed session where you want something super lightweight where you're going to get a lot of ground feel like the Rebel V3. And that's why I wanted to highlight a bunch of different types of shoes. And so, so far, this one, again, massive asterisk, has been super bouncy, but also nice and protective. I've been doing a lot of faster daily miles, the same pace I'd be doing in a long run. And it's felt really good for that because it's been comfortable, supportive, protective with a little bit of bounce without feeling like it's weighing me down. And I know it is a little bit funny to say that because it is on the heavier side. And actually, I'm going to bring the scale out here to show you something in a second. But for, again, that marathon training style runner, this seems like, and I'm going to do the long run test soon, so maybe I'll throw that in the description after I do it. But this seems like it's going to be a really good shoe for those long runs with that marathon pace and threshold pace in there. So my favorites here, they are a little bit more biased to marathon style running because that's the training I'm doing. So I'm going to close it out here with a few more bonus picks that are both Saucony Endorphin Speed 2 replacements and a little bit more suitable for those of you who aren't doing these longer style runs. So this is the Hoka Skyward X. I don't even know if I said the name, by the way. <laughs> and it has a Piba foam mixed with the super critical foam in the midsole. Not mixed, but the super critical EVA foam adds a support. The Piba adds a bounce. And then there's a carbon fiber plate, which they're calling the suspension system. So probably should have said what the shoe was before I was just ranting and raving about it. But all right, let me go grab those alternate bonus picks and we can close it out. All right, guys. So this is not a first run review where we're going to do a ton of weighing shoes, but I brought the scale because I need to show you something. So we're going to go through these socket endorphin speed two replacement recommendations. One of them that I have here is the Topo Cyclone two. So I have not had a ton of miles in the shoe. And because I'm in this high mileage marathon training style right now, I didn't love it, but I know a lot of you love this shoe. So that's, that's why I do this bonus section too, because I get to highlight some picks that are your favorites. And so a lot of people who love the speed too, like the cyclone for having that same soft bouncy foam feeling, but without the plastic plate. So that is something I really liked in it. It felt soft, felt bouncy. It felt really fast and lightweight, like a feather on my foot. So let's take a look at the weight here and you're going to see in a second why, why I want to do this. Ah, unstable. All right, so the Cyclone 2 is coming in at 209 grams. And I have fired up here the Jack Daniels 800 meter training plan. I have never raced in 800 meters. I would probably be a good 800 meter racer because one time I was on Wikipedia looking up different 
race length and champions. And the 800 meter champion, I think his name is Donovan Brazier. He's 6'2, 160 pounds, which is exactly my size. So that's probably what I'm optimized for and not marathon training. But unfortunately, or fortunately, I'm a hobby jogger and I was doing other things in high school in the tennis shed at the Groton School for Boys and Girls, not building my aerobic base. I was probably doing the opposite of that, to be honest. So <laughs> let's look at this. Though. The, my whole point of this is if you take a look at the race phase of this of the 800 meter training plan, one of these quality workouts he has here is a 15 minute warm up with six by 200 meters R. That's the repetition pace. And so for me at my phase of training, that would be something like a five minute flat pace. It is really fast. That is not a type of workout where I want to use a shoe like the Hoka Skyward X. I would want something super lightweight, maybe feel on the ground a little bit more, but very nimble, light on my toes. And so this shoe coming in at 210 grams would be really nice for that style of training. If we compare it to the Hoka Skyward X here, 333 grams compared to 210. And so there is such a wide variety of shoes on the market, which you can see here. And by the way, I've been drinking these non-alcoholic Sierra Nevada beers. I gotta, I might have to email them or something because I really like them almost as much as athletic. But there's such a wide variety of shoes on the market, which is great. And these shoes are tools which can help support our training, whether we're doing 800 meter training or marathon training, right? Doing 120 miles a week with 22 milers. So this would be my pick if you want something for short and fast efforts, maybe to replace your endorphin speed too. You're not doing super high mileage, but you want to feel the ground. Maybe you don't want to do the New Balance Rebel V3. That would be the Topo Cyclone 2 first bonus pick here. Oh, the other thing, Hoka Skyward X. When I do the long run video, I could absolutely hate this shoe. So don't buy it yet. You actually can't buy it yet because it's not out until April 25th. And by the time that comes, I probably will have done the long run review already. So that's why I feel comfortable calling my shot a little bit. All right, next bonus pick here, Puma Deviate Nitro 2, which is an awesome overall shoe. I highlighted it in my best or favorite daily trainer roundup as that plated shoe to get if you want something with a little bit more pep, if you wanted a plated shoe for everyday miles. It's also a great speed training shoe if you want that soft, fun, fast, plated feel that you got from the Speed 2 in an updated version with a little bit more grip. And so they are coming out with the third version of this soon, and this is already on sale. So another sale shoe should be able to get this for about 130 bucks. It's going to be super durable. It lasts a long time. Nice, fun feel. Only downside is a little bit narrow. All right. And then my last two bonus ones here are ones that I'm not even going to recommend them and say these are the best, but I just want to let you guys know about them and know that I'll be testing them more soon. So first one is the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Flash 2. So this is a funky kind of shoe. You can see on the back here, and let me see if I can get a good angle of it. Yeah, you can see on the back here, this heel is not touching the ground. Only this middle part is touching the ground. And so the secret sauce here is that it puts you right up on your toes. It has a really aggressive rocker. And a lot of folks are saying it's a good socketing endorphin speed two replacement for a little bit of more of a rockered feel. Now I've done one fast workout in the shoe. I actually did it on a track. I never go on a track. It was up at Duke University when I was there for my last week of my MBA program. And it felt amazing for that. I did about, I think this is my favorite getting back into fast running workout. It's eight by 600. So just doing eight or sorry, six by 800 and just doing that at whatever pace comes to you that day. So I did it probably about a little bit faster than my threshold pace at the time. So five forties and the shoe felt really fun, especially Paired with the track, I got a nice structured bounce to it. So not super soft underfoot. It is a really stiff shoe. So it, it reinforces that rolling feel and really makes you land right up on your toes. So I don't think this is going to be the best long run shoe. I don't think it would be the long run shoe that I would pick, but maybe for those one hour tempo runs, it could be a nice shoe. So one, we're still going to have to test here. I'm not endorsing it just yet but I know some runners are finding this really fun shoe. And then last shoe, 
not last shoe. Second to last shoe, penultimate, I am going to bring out one more. Tier Valkyrie Speedworks. So this is the same exact setup as the Saucony Endorphin Speed 2, 3, and 4. It is a beaded Piba foam. So you can see little beads all throughout the midsole. So super bouncy, plus the plastic plate with the tier motto always in front. I love that. So it felt a little bit more like the Boston 12 to me than it did the Speed two, three, or four, which I really liked. It's firmer underfoot. It's designed to give more support for bigger runners. And I've seen some reviews popping up on the forums already from some bigger runners who are really liking this. And so I did one run in the shoe so far. It was a 90 minute steady style run. I think I finished maybe with some strides at the end, but I really enjoyed it. Definitely a firmer feel. So if you do not want a firm speed training shoe, do not get this. Get the Puma Deviate Nitro 2. Get the Rebel V3. Get the Hokamok 6. I mean, just get the Hokamok 6. Don't, don't get this if you want a soft shoe. But if you want a little bit more of a structured, firm, fast feeling with that plate, I would go for the tier. And again, I got to test it. But what I was getting in the forefoot was a lot of nice cushioning, meaning it's not going to bottom out like the Speed 3 did for me. That is something I'm confident saying about this shoe. I don't think you're going to get that bottoming out feeling on longer runs. And that was the same thing I with the carbon fiber plated version of the shoe. The foam held up really well for long runs as well. So second to last shoe, the last one I'm going to grab out of the office is one of the ones I'm most excited about getting more miles in. All right, guys, so the last shoe here, the Adidas Takumi Sen 10. If you're watching this video still, I don't know how long it is, but you must be a real shoe nerd and love running shoes. And you also might know that the Takumi Sen 8 is a really fun shoe and was one of my favorites from last year. Someone actually emailed me or DM'd me at the Sup While Running Instagram asking to do this video because they knew that this used to be my favorite speed training shoe. And so this was eclipsed, replaced, knocked down a peg by... The Rebel V3 last year because, well, the Rebel V3 is more readily available. It's impossible to find the Takumi Sen 8s anymore. And they launched the current version of this, the 10, in a really weird way. And it was hard to find it anywhere. But not only was it an availability thing, I felt that it's a little bit easier to run in the Rebel V3. The Takumi Sen 10, it was always hard for me to lace it up. And there was just some weird fit thing. And then it just felt like the foam in the Rebel V3 performed a little bit better across a variety of different paces so way more versatile comfortable affordable easy to find and run and chew in the rebel v3 however trade-offs right <laughs> the trade-off of the takumi sen 10 is all those things i just said the downsides not that comfortable it feels a little bit weird to get on foot also narrow platform but once you're running fast in this thing and for me anything under marathon pace so starting to breathe a little bit hard this thing was like a hot knife through earth balance. It was amazing. It felt th this was the best fast running shoe. But and the reason I haven't highlighted it until minute 35 or whatever it is right now, I've shifted away from this style of training where I'm doing a lot of these all out repetition or interval workouts. And I'm doing more long style runs where I want something a little bit more comfortable like a Hoka Mach 6 or even where is my heavy guy? the Hoka Skyward X. And so Takumi Sen 8 was a great shoe, but it wouldn't be the one I recommend for most runners. I think if you are doing half marathon, marathon training, and you want something for those super fast days, you're not going to be able to find the 8. But the 10 is the replacement and the one to look out for. I did one workout in this guy, similar to the Flash 2. And because I was in a super high mileage period of training, when both of these, the Flash 2 and this came into my rotation, I didn't put a ton of miles on them. So highlighting this to say, more testing to come. I did not love it right out of the box as much as I liked the Takumi Sen 10. And if you look at the midsole foams here, you can see they look a little bit different, even though they're both called Light Strike Pro. So it is possible they changed the formulation of the foam a little bit. I also think we're going to see the foam break in. So stay tuned for the summer or the spring of speed because we're going to be putting some serious pace across a lot of these shoes that we still need to test. So this is not even a recommendation. This is just to say, keep an eye out for more testing on this channel of the Takumi Sen 10 because it could ratchet or rocket climb right up the list of the favorite speed training shoes. And it's not actually positioned by Adidas as a speed training shoe. It's positioned by Adidas as a 5K, 10K racing shoe. But the one thing is, <laughs> this is the hobby jogging channel and most of us are not 
racing training for 5k's and, and 10k's we're using these types of shoes to support our longer distance efforts so that is all i have for you today guys we got so many awesome shoes on the market right now i mean just look at this so let me know your thoughts on favorite speed training shoes let me know what speed training shoes you want to see me bring in to test and compare and let me know which one of these guys so flash 2 takumi sen 10 tier valkyrie topo cycle let me know which one of these guys you're most excited to see me start putting some more miles in and what comparisons you want to see so as always guys i appreciate you and i'll be back tomorrow with another video